What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Justin Ford Podcast, where I'll be releasing life-changing principles and valuable information focused on all things faith, finance, family, fitness, real estate, and so much more. Let's go! What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Justin Ford Unleash podcast. Super excited to be with you here again today. Hopefully, you've been doing great since the last time we spoke. Guys, if you are enjoying the show, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button right here on YouTube. Uh, You can also subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. And if you're really loving the show, do me a favor. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review and share this with someone you know. Got another great episode in store for you today. But before we get into that, I wanted to let you know that this episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is a team of professionals that believe everyone should be treated as if they lived next door. The founders and team members have more than 150 years of combined experience helping clients all over the country choose the best loan program to help you accomplish your goals. Nextdoor Lending is currently licensed in 21 states and has a team of over 100 loan officers specializing in helping you get the best rate and terms. Whether you're looking to refinance your home or you're looking to purchase your next home, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today at 1-888-885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Super excited. Got a great guest in the studio today, Matt Haig with Weatherstone Property Inspections. How you doing today, my brother? Doing awesome. Glad to be here today. Glad to have you. So, you know, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm a real estate agent. And when you're in real estate, like many of you are that are listening to this show, uh, one of the aspects of being in real estate is being able to work with a great home inspection company uh, to be able to, you know, refer to your buyers. And there's a lot of home inspection companies out there, Matt, isn't there? There are. (laughs) Uh, How long have you been in the business? Been doing inspections for about 20 years. Uh, Weatherstone's been in place for about a dozen years. Yep. Yeah. And so, um, so 20 years, how, how did you start off in like the home inspection? Um, I know it didn't start with home inspections. I know you've had your hands in quite a few things within that realm. T- talk to us a little about how you got into this industry. You know, I was, uh, I was, I was building and buying and selling properties and I had a, a realtor friend of mine. And yeah. She is still one of the first realtors that we used to go, you really should be a home inspector. That's awesome. You know, and I kind of loved the industry and it was very early on and I actually went and did a two week course uh, in Washington, D.C., yeah, I think early 90s. And I said, this is really cool. And I, you know, and I kind of experimented with that, but I was building new homes and doing a lot of different things. Um, eventually, as my, uh, as a builder, I found myself working too much. I had young kids and I made a decision that, you know what, I'm kind of, I could see myself drifting away from the family. And so I made a move to, I uh, had an opportunity to take a job as a municipal inspector nice. for, a, for an affluent community and uh, just read the code book. Went and took the test, but 200 people there and ended up having one of the top scores and uh, took that job. And it was a great season, seven or eight years as a uh, municipal inspector, learning the code, working with the public. Yeah. But ultimately, I was kind of drawn back to, as the kids got older, yep. you know, I, I had a vision of, of, of bringing my uh, family in business. And yeah. ultimately, my oldest son is our, our lead inspector. That's awesome. And uh, so we kind of came back to that and uh, kind of put together all of our experience in, in building uh municipal inspections, uh, flipping homes, I've yeah. renovated hundred year old homes. I've built new homes in Oakland, Macomb and St. Clair County. And it all kind of fit together. Yeah. And I just love working with people. I love working with realtors. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, so we enjoy what we do and yeah. I think we're pretty good at it. That's awesome. So it sounds like you've got just a, a ton of experience, you know, and have, have had <clears throat> your hands in, you know, many different aspects mm-hmm. of, of the process. And so, so before you took that job, were you, were you building homes? Is that what you were doing? Yeah, I was building new construction. Okay. That's awesome. And so what drew you actually to like this industry starting? Now, did you start in the industry by being a builder? Was there something before that, that kind of got your, your you feet know, wet and well, excited as about I was it? building, I started a home inspection company because I, I liked the idea of it. Yeah. It, it was early on. And I'm going to date myself a little bit because that, that's back when home inspectors were using carbon copy reports oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and check boxes. There's you know? some people that still use those, <laughs> <Yeah>. honestly. <laughs> and the industry didn't have a lot of respect. Um, I liked it, but you know, I was, I also liked building and seeing something come from nothing. And, uh, but I also just like communicating and the relationships. And I think I kind of was drawn back into it. That's so awesome. I, uh, 
uh, about a dozen years ago as my son was coming along, yeah. um, who's been with us for over 10 years now. Uh, it's kind of just drawn back into the, the home inspection business. And it's really evolved into something uh, pretty substantial now. Yeah, it's it's major. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, home inspections are pretty much necessary. You can't say mandatory because it's obviously the mm-hmm. client's option. Uh, but I think out of all the transactions I've been involved with in my career, there's only been a handful that have opted not to do a mm-hmm. home inspection. And that usually, you know, they regretted it at some point because right. of, of missed uh, missed stuff. Now, you know, I've got here that you have completed over, you and your team have completed over 11,000 inspections. That's true. That's amazing. So I'm sure you could pretty, pretty much go in and do a home inspection with your eyes closed. Well, the eyes are really important, so I probably couldn't do it with my <laughs> right, eyes. Right, right, right. But we have done a lot of them. I enjoy them. Uh, a lot of realtors don't always want me personally because I really enjoy the process. I'm having really engaging them and having conversations. Mm-hmm. It might take a little bit longer than the rest of the yeah. team. But, uh, you know, I'll do the challenging ones, commercial inspections, some of our luxury homes. I'll get involved in those when we bring a team of inspectors. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, that's exciting because I know one of the things when we had, um, you know, first talked about, you know, what you guys do, you know, a typical home inspector just does typical residential homes. You guys do so much more than that, talk about some of the projects you've worked on, like you're talking about commercials, some yeah, you know, and, different types uh, of homes. And we're really enjoying the commercial aspect because it's really diverse. You know, we've done, I just, yesterday was just quoting a, a 60,000 square foot uh, school building. Wow. And actually it's a, it's a faith-based organization uh, working with young boys. Wow. To buy this building and really, so that, that intrigued me there. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so we're going to inspect that building. Those are difficult. So we just, I did, we did a walk through kind of. I want to get them their correct scope. We yeah. can do everything. I can get you whatever you need for that inspection. We'll bring a team of inspectors in. We did, uh, we've done the Kresge Mansion. Um, wow. 20,000 square feet, 1910. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had four people on that. Did, you know, we're doing drone work and thermal imaging. And there's just so much. But those houses are fun because you know, there's so much history there. Yeah. Uh, so we've done a whole uh, 70,000 square foot assisted living facilities. You know, anything commercial could be anything. Wow. You know, historic homes that have been now working as, you know, a, a commercial building where they've got six or seven units inside of it. Yeah. All, all sorts of interesting things. And that's where our background, having been in building and renovated yeah. 100-year-old homes, that we can really excel at that and get the, our clients what they need. Yeah, so you're, you're bringing so much more to the table than just a typical inspector who is only experienced in doing regular, you know, residential homes. Uh, you've also recently, I think you had mentioned too, you've, you've done some, some homes down in Detroit and some of the uh, historical neighborhoods. Talk, talk yeah. about that because, I mean, those houses, and they don't make them the way that they used to, but I'm sure you find stuff in those 100-plus-year-old homes that, you know, I'm sure... You know, it's probably pretty fun or okay. interesting. They, uh, they are fun. Again, that, the Kresge Mansion is right on the corner, I think, of uh, Woodward and and Boston. And, and yeah. In the Boston yep. Edison yep. district there. Yep. So we've ended up, we've done, I think, six homes in there now. Uh, one of our clients was, uh, uh, I, would, I won't drop his name, but he, he flew in from London. He was in the music industry and he was buying a house down there. And, yeah. Uh, HGTV was, you know, sponsoring them X amount per episode as they renovated it. So we did a couple homes for them. And those are, it's just fun to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're seeing all this history, but there's a lot to look at. And you really have to make sure that you get the scope right and the details. And they took our, our report was a basis for HGTV going and, and That's doing awesome. the, reno- the renovation plan. And so those are, those are like fun. That we is fun. enjoy those those right yeah no that's awesome and so like when you think of like the older homes the historical homes you know I'm sure there's some things that you probably enjoy about doing home inspections what do you what would you say like when you look at some of these older homes versus newer homes today obviously a lot of new builders and obviously you were Mm -hmm. a builder and you have that background where do you see kind of the um where have things changed? Where have new builders kind of <laughs> cut corners where you you see the quality of how things were built a lot different back yeah. then than they are today? And where do you th- where do you see some of that has kind of gone sideways? Yeah, that's a great question because we actually, we teach a class. We've got about a dozen classes certified for con ed credits for the realtors that we teach. And one of our latest classes is called, it's uh, essentially it's this old house and the evolution of the building codes. And we talk about how things have changed from 1910 uh, to where we are today in the workmanship uh, it, it was really like an artwork almost some of the detail that you find but it was before the building codes and so you had a lot of diversity in, in how builders constructed things and so mm. you would see things uh, really amazing construction in the in the early part of the last century 
Yeah, and then we went to a place where all of a sudden we were minimalist and, you know, it, it might follow the economy. As the economy changed, uh, all of a sudden the builders were using less products and we saw minimalist construction. Right. And maybe they were experimenting with new products and, and with the electrical industry and things that maybe weren't a good idea. Um, and so, you know, we went from knob and tube wiring uh, to where we are today with circuit breakers and right. electrical codes have changed a lot. And so how do you how do you talk about that when you're going through an inspection like the Kresge Mansion? Yeah. The, all the original wiring holy with, holy. with copper uh, uh, switches for for each of the breakers and um i couldn't even find an electrician <laughs> to evaluate it for me so wow. you know we did our best and went through that methodically but yeah. you know so some things are, are a little more challenging uh, but you see so much today i, I would say with um uh, with homes being mass produced and really people looking at the bottom line so you've seen the quality right um uh, decrease in the quality of the, you know, it's, it's minimalist construction. You still got the same diversity. You've got good builders and you've got builders that are trying to uh, maximize their profit at the, at the, uh, at the cost of uh, quality. Right. So, you know, we do new construction people say, why do I need a home inspection on a new house? <laughs> and we just laugh because yeah. we, we find so many things on there and we're kind of like, uh, given the builder's final punch list, hopefully before they've right. got to the closing table and getting those details corrected. Yeah. That's interesting. And you know, that kind of, I've never thought about that, but you know, when, when building codes and things came in, that probably changed a lot. And, you know, me and my wife were in New York city not too long ago for our anniversary. And we're just walking around the city and you look at, you know, all these older buildings and what you said is so true. Like it was artwork, right? These, yeah. and, and it's crazy. You know, we went to St. Patrick's cathedral, which is like the biggest church in New York city. And to see, you know, 150 years ago, how, the craftsmanship of how they built this church and just the, mm -hmm. the detail of it. And then you see things today, not that it's not nice, yeah. but it's like even the skyscrapers, these older buildings in Manhattan, and then you see the newer ones and it's just like totally back then it was like you uh, said, it was artwork and it was, yeah. it was amazing. It was something that we couldn't even do today. We had an opportunity to go to Switzerland, um, this past summer and to see some of the old churches and the structure and the detail, like we couldn't even replicate that. No, you thing. can't. Uh, and it's just amazing. You don't even have people who, who specialize in that, right. you know, those were Masons and people who they would bring in to do right. that detailed work. And yeah, that, a lot of those are lost trades. That yeah. We're not going to see again. Yeah, right. It's crazy. <clears throat> and so you do commercial, you do obviously historical homes, mm -hmm. you do residential homes. Is there anything else that you would say that you guys really specialize in, you know, that, uh, you know, kind of sets you apart because again, being in real estate, there's tons of home inspection companies, right? Oh yeah. Just like there's tons of title companies and mortgage companies, but everybody has a niche and everybody has something that, that they kind of do that really, you know, causes them to, to really stand out. And, you know, what are some of the things that you would say you guys do that really you specialize in and, 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 you know, people call on you for? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, just back up a step and just talk about in a lead into the answer to that question. That's a great sure. question. Yeah. Is that the industry has changed a lot. Again, I mentioned that, yep. you know, back in the nineties, early nineties, people were doing carbon copy reports. Yeah. They'd walk up, do a bunch of check boxes, rip it off. And there you go and walk away. There was no pictures. Right. Um, and the expectations that met the expectations. Well, today the expectations are much higher right. for realtors and for home inspectors. Right. And so you can't just do the home inspection. Now. Right. And so uh, people are expecting that you would do more. So I was going to talk about the fact that, um, what, uh, when a home inspector comes in now, uh, you know, now inspectors are doing sewer scopes. Uh, we're doing, you know, radon testing. Yep. We're doing air quality testing. Uh, what if the home has a well and septic? Who's going to do that? And you need to get different inspectors for all of those. And so one of the things to answer your question, what sets us apart is the fact that we can do all those things. That's great. Someone calls up Weatherstone. We're fully staffed. We've got 11 people on our team. Yeah. We're going to answer. We're going to ask all the right questions when they're scheduling. Yep. Find out how you're financing. Is it FHA, VA, RD? Are they going to need specific water testing, well testing? Yeah. Uh, are they going to need a, a found manufactured home cert? You know, are they going to need, uh, um, you know, lead testing for the water or, or whatever? Right. So... We want to be a place where if you call Weatherstone and you have some needs for inspections, we're going to be able to handle not just the home, but the well and the septic, the water testing, the air quality, whatever you need. Yeah. Um, and the equipment that we're carrying, you know, you could just walk around before and again, as I said, with a notepad. And uh, mm -hmm. today our inspectors have to be knowledgeable. Yep. They have to be certified. They have to have the right equipment. We've yep. got, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in sewer scopes and yeah. thermal cameras and uh 
you know, we're all using iPads and MacBook Pros. And right. so we were professionals. And that's yeah. where the industry has changed from a, a contractor who knows a little bit about construction to a professional who right. knows uh, the entire gamut of all the things that are required uh, because people expect that now. So right. the expectation level is pretty high. And that's super important, yeah. obviously, when, when somebody's doing a home inspection, you know, they want to make sure that that's being done the right way. And I've, I've heard, like, matter of fact, I have a, I have a seller right now that we're selling a home for. She just bought the house last year. Home, home inspector came in, didn't find anything wrong with the foundation. I don't even know, you know, if you looked, we didn't represent her on the buy for that. But then she contacted us because she had gotten some water in the crawl space. So she had called somebody out to come look at it. And that, company like found that the entire foundation was collapsing and so they removed the front porch and the entire house is like on cinder blocks right now like and it looks like it's gonna fall over she bought it for a hundred and eighty thousand and we've got it listed right now for 125 now she has to do it as a short sale and she said the home inspector missed you know seeing this because we would have never have bought it if if we would have known that the uh, you know the foundation was was falling apart, and so you know obviously you know home inspectors aren't perfect, right? There's sometimes that things might be missed, but I think this is why it's so important to make sure that you're working with the right home inspection company, uh, so that those things don't happen. Right. It, I mean, and home inspectors have been note to be generalist in their. I think in the past hadn't had a lot of respect. People say, ah, oh, they're just a home inspector, just. They're just turning on light switches uh, and and minimalist things. Yep. Um, but you can't do that, right? Because you know we we're taking on. Uh, we recognize that uh, our clients. This is one of the biggest financial decisions they're going to make in yeah. their lifetime, and we want to get it right for them. We're, we say that we're selling peace of mind. Yep. So, but uh, so it's important to do a thorough inspection. However, one of the things to to go back to your last question about what differentiates us is yep. that is that. We have to, it's important to be a good inspector and to identify all the various things in the homes. And we talk about what's the positives, the negatives, so we're giving them the whole package because if you just focus on the negative, you might scare uh, a client away from what's, what is a good home. Right. So we try to be fair and balanced. And it seems like that. there are some home inspectors that do that. Like uh, I've had other agents tell me like, yeah, I think the home inspector spooked the buyer and now they don't want to uh, move forward because it was all negative. Right. And so where I was going with that is that it's important not just to be able to identify those items, but how you talk about it, how you disclose what you find is very important. Right. Not that you're trying to minimize something or or maximize something to show how knowledgeable we are but the idea is to put right. it in this proper perspective offer solutions yep. and so what we hire for for our inspectors is that they're g- great communicators yeah everyone on our team honestly has at least two years of college yeah and we tout that because we recognize it's important that they've got good people skills that they can communicate both in written form verbally because yeah. you know we walk through this home we spend three hours on this home inspection talking to our clients we do a photo review at the end um but when we're done they're going to turn to you and say okay justin right what should we do now right and so it's important that they're really comfortable with we've given them all the tools that they need to make a yep. good decision yeah and, and what's great is you know being a real estate agent for those that are listening right now is like a good home inspection company is not only important, it's necessary because you're an extension of our business, right? right? And if, and the buyer's always looking to us, I mean, you know, most buyers don't have a home inspection company that they're, that they're working with. So they always look to the real estate agent. Yeah. And I think, you know, if a real estate agent refers a, a buyer, a bad home inspection company or something goes sideways or wrong, it, it's a direct reflection on the real estate agent because we're like, we're giving that recommendation and, and if we make the wrong recommendation, it may hurt, you know, not only that deal, but even future business. And so it's so important to be working with the right people. Yeah. Um, no, so that's good. And so I want to go back to what you had talked about radon because we're seeing that I've been selling homes now for nine years and more and more people are, are testing for radon. Whereas I remember early on when I started, there wasn't a lot of people testing for that. Correct. And there's also a lot of people testing for the sewer scopes too. And we're seeing that, um, especially like in Ann Arbor, you know, with the orange Berg, you yep. know, st- like tons of stuff out there. But as far as radon, you know, it's not something that you can smell, right? It's not something you can sense. 
you know, would you say that in almost every home purchase, it's important to do that? Or when do you recommend that? When should a real estate agent recommend that, you know, uh, to a buyer? Yeah, and that's a great point because the awareness for radon, obviously it's been in, this is a, it's a, it's a colorless, solarless gas has been in the ground for, uh, for, you know, centuries. However, the awareness of, uh, that it's here. And, uh, so we can look at the state of Michigan has got maps. The EPA has got maps that you can look at the radon levels across the state. Now, they're not great, but they kind of just give you some general categories. Mm -hmm. and, and we know that, uh, as you get into Oakland County and to the West and in, up into the St. Clair County. So it's, 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 uh, uh, throughout Michigan, we are on, um, most of the state uh, is in, in a realm that's below what we would call the uh, the action level. EPA sets an action level at 4.0 picocuries per liter. Mm -hmm. um, initially, we were we were only uh, recommending it we're in areas that we knew, but we've been finding it. We've been kind of tracking it ourselves and looking at it geographically, and we're finding it more and more that the levels are up at or over 4.0. And so we've been recommending radon for, uh, for most of our houses. Yeah. And plus it gives you that peace of mind and you don't know until you test it. My son, my son just bought a house a month ago. Yeah. Tested for radon 8.0. Wow. Like, oh. That's high. That's so, double, right? That's yeah, double. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we're having a radon remediation company come in and we're, and we're working through that. Wow. Um, so, and I feel good about that. Yeah, absolutely. Just getting married in May, looking to start his family. We want him, want him to be in a safe place. Yes. And so, Absolutely. We encourage people to do their own research because that way it's not like we're trying to force something on you that you don't need. Yep. But you can go out there online and Google radon yep. and educate yourself and say, you know what? It's probably worthwhile for us to do this test because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. And then if you, and you have it and it's, it shouldn't be a deal breaker because I would just, if we find elevated radon levels, we'll say, well, you know what? All the houses in the subdivision probably have similar levels. Yep. They didn't know that. It's something we can easily remediate. You know, the costs are going to be anywhere from 800 to two grand. Yep. It's not the end of the world. If right. you catch it as part of the home inspection, yeah. maybe you negotiate part of that as a deal. Yep. Everybody's happy. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And so even for those that let's say are listening right now who, you know, because I think a lot of times we associate a home inspection with somebody who's buying a home, mm -hmm. but you can get a home inspection, you know, if you already currently live in a home, right? Just to kind of have, because like, I've never been in my attic. You know what I mean? I don't go up there. It's you're, not, not, you're not alone. Yeah, right? And so it's like a lot of people don't just go in their attic. Yeah. A lot of people aren't, you know, just going in and looking. You know, obviously you can look at your furnace and your hot water tank and kind of gauge that. But, like, there are still things that yeah. people who own homes have owned homes for a while. And just because, and you can maybe answer this question, is just because when somebody bought their home five or six, ten years ago, there was no issue with radon, can it become an issue? And if somebody listening right now, let's say, said, wow, I, I'm – Maybe I want to test my home for radon. Someone could still reach out to you. Absolutely. Doesn't have to be on a purchase and still maybe Absolutely. do a home inspection or, you know, check for radon, right? And that's the whole market segment that we're trying to move into is that, you know, people will do maintenance on their home and right. get, get it inspected or on their car rather. They'll get, they'll get uh, maintenance on their car and have it inspected to see where it's at. But they don't do it for their home because they kind of assume that they know. Right. Um, so doing that, just a periodic home inspection to identify, you know, because as as things get older, they begin to fail. And yep. so, and you kind of get used to that. We'll come in and, and talk to a seller and I'll ask them how old the roof is. I think it's about 10 years old. And of course, it's about 20 years old, but they just, time is slipping by and they didn't realize right. like, what age it was. And it's good to go in and um, it, it works for a punch list. You know, you, spring comes around, you want to get out and take care of some things. And right. we, we can step in there, give you a full list of, of maintenance items and get you kind of comfortable. Yep, I'm on top of my maintenance. Oh no, I'm, I'm lacking here. I haven't, my hot water heater is about to fail. I'm going to do be proactive and correct that now instead of waiting, you know, until I've got a holiday gathering and it fails in the middle of that. Right. So, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that could happen. Right. I mean, yeah. it, and I think it's important, just like you said, even a car, you take it in, you know, hopefully, you know, every so often to get an oil change and get your tires balanced and rotated, mm -hmm. have a, a tune up or whatever. Yeah. But you never really hear about that with the house. Exactly. What are some of the things that uh, homeowners that are listening right now, you know, what are some things that, you know, they should be focusing on to, you know, when we're talking about like maintenance, what are some of the things that as homeowners, we should be thinking about, aware of, looking at, um, to, to get ahead of not having to, to just pay for some high ticket item because it goes out when we could have done something to prevent it. Well, there's, there's some key things that most people are, are, are cognizant of, and that's going to be like the age of your roof. You know, right. Give a limited life expectancy or furnace. The furnace is really a big one because yep. as a furnace fails, uh, the heat exchanger, the metal in the heat exchanger will break down. You're going to get small fissures, small cracks, and eventually you get 
carbon monoxide leaks. And so, um, but having a third party inspect that, we're going to be fair with you. We, we test for carbon monoxide, for gas leaks. We're going to give you the age of the unit, expected life of the unit. Um, we may r- very well recommend a, a contractor to come in, but a contractor comes in and he's going to tell you, he doesn't make money on a house call. He makes money on selling you a new furnace. Right. And so it's good to have a couple opinions, but also a third party who's not trying to sell you a new furnace, give you an evaluation of those systems. Yeah. And so that's where a home inspection company uh, comes into play. Yeah. You know, we're hearing a lot of, uh, you know, things that um, are being recommended to homeowners to create energy efficiency, Mm -hmm. you know, changing out your light bulbs, you know, making them more LED. Is there anything else, um, you know, a homeowner can do to maybe make it more efficient? I mean, does that, does that work? I know. Yeah, well, absolutely. And that's (laughs) a a great point because you mentioned earlier that, Hey, I never went to my attic. Well, guess what? You know, uh, we talked about the building codes evolving. In 1980, people were putting three inches of insulation in. Right. You're getting a lot of heat loss. And we still see homes like that wow. uh, with three inches of insulation or less. Uh, a lot of the older homes. Today, the, the current energy code is R38 if you're using a prescriptive method. That's a huge difference. Maybe you're looking at 16 inches versus wow. three inches. And so that is a big difference. That's, and heat goes up. That's the, uh, or en- as heat rises, heat loss in your, in your ceilings and your attics is one of the biggest areas that you can uh, repair for a for not a lot of money, actually, it's a pretty. It doesn't cost that much uh, to insulate your attic. Sometimes a homeowner can do that themselves, and so that's a good one. Uh, you know, crawl space is the same thing today. That a crawl space wasn't required to be insulated or properly ventilated. Today, we condition the spaces, insulate the perimeter walls, again capturing that heat and, and uh, reducing the probability of getting frozen pipes or things like that. Yeah, and people don't go into the crawl space just like they don't go into the attic. And right, those are areas with the home inspector. We love to get down in that crawl space. Yeah. Well, maybe not. We, don't yeah. it, we, we do go down there. We're very, we're very comprehensive on our inspections. That's awesome. Um, what, what would you say, you know, when somebody, let's say, is listening right now, they're the or a first-time home buyer, they're thinking about purchasing a home. Uh, what are the most important things a buyer should be concerned about when it comes to a home inspection? You know, because there's a lot. I, I always try to prep a buyer to say there's always going to be things that pop up, mm-hmm. but we only really want to target you know, the big things of concern, but what would you say are some of the most important things a buyer should be concerned about or really pay most attention to on a home inspection report? Um, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure I like that question because we get that a lot. People will call us and say, well, I'm just concerned about the foundation. And for good, for good right. reason, you mentioned the, the story earlier about someone uh, had a poor foundation yep. that wasn't caught on the inspection, but we don't see a lot of foundations that are failing. You mm-hmm. want to catch it when they are, right? but, um, and people will say, I just want you to just give me the basic inspection. Yeah. And so when you do that, like, what are you not going to inspect, right? Right. Okay, I'll not inspect this or that. And I would, we always recommend, we would recommend a comprehensive yeah, inspection. Yeah, full, full plan, yeah. You can't get a contractor into your house for less than 500 bucks. Right. Our inspections are, you know, our average inspection price is about yeah. uh, five, 530 or yeah. something. So I would say we're going to focus on the roof and the foundation, but getting the entire, I mean, there's hundreds of systems in a home. Right. And we've got a very specific process we're going to go through. We're looking at the exterior, the windows, the caulking, the roof, the gutters, the drainage. You know, we make all those notes for the exterior. We go inside. We're looking at the attic, insulation, ventilation. Are there any bats? Right. Pest inspections. Um, Systematically going through every component, you know, your water heater, your furnace, uh, the electrical systems. There's just so much to look at. Yep. And and people expect us to do that. Of course, if we're there more than three hours, they start looking at their clock. Right. And as an inspector, we're like, well, we want to get it right. And so yeah, you know, absolutely. we recognize people's time is valuable. And so, so yeah. uh, if the home is a certain size, we'll bring two inspectors in to minimize that. But we want to be thorough. Yeah. Uh, I've had realtors say to me, well, my other guy has done an hour. I'm like, That's, we're not that guy. I right. Said, we're going to be, we're going to get you a comprehensive inspection report uh, that makes that decision, make, helps you to make that great decision on the right. home. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not one of the things that you should shortcut, that's for sure. Yeah. I want to shift gears a little bit, Matt, because, you know, our show is, you know, where we talk about a lot of different things, you know, faith, finance, family, fitness, and real estate. Uh, You're also a brother in the Lord. Amen. And how does, how does, um, well, first off, you know, how long have you been uh, serving the Lord? When did you come to, you know, know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And how does that affect how you handle your business and how you do business? Well, it's, it's a huge effect on that. And you asked a lot of questions that I'd probably take a couple hours to answer <laughs> all of those. Yeah. But uh, uh, I grew up in the church, parochial, grade school, parochial high school, but I didn't have my moment uh, of repentance and faith until I was away at college. I was by myself. You know, I left home. My dad and I had a challenging relationship, and I, you know, I was pretty convinced that he was the reason for, you know, all of my problems. But when I left, 
it was just me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I had to realize that, Hey, I'm the problem. Yeah. And, uh, but I came to, to faith. I was going to, went to school at NC state in North Carolina, went away for four years. My dad, of course, said, I think you should stay here in Michigan. I'm like, no, I, I was, I was 18, 19. I, you were out of here. I knew everything. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I was out of there. Uh, eventually came back home, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and that was the first call I made. I was I was by myself. I just uh, came to a place. I, I saw the person I was. I knew that's not who God wanted me to be. Hated my sin, but didn't have the power over it. Right. And when I, I had a just a powerful moment, just me on my knees, crying out to God, saying, whatever you want, I'm yours. Yeah. And it was a, the very first thing that I did was pick up the phone and call my dad. No one had to tell me that. You know, that's about that's true repentance. It's like I instantly knew, you know, what I needed to do. And I called him and said, Dad, the prodigal son, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Wow. Because I'm coming home. Wow. So it, was, it really was the prodigal son story. Yeah. <laughs> and that's such a powerful yeah. story. And, um, you know, I didn't grow up in the church. You know, I obviously oh. grew up. I always believed in God, but I never knew what it meant to uh, to be saved and be a Christian. And I remember, you know, I was 16 and we used to play basketball at the church on Wednesday nights across from where I lived. And the only way that they would allow you to play basketball is you had to come to youth group and hear, you know, the sermon. And all my friends would always be joking around and not take it serious. But like, yeah. I remember like really being convicted of my sin, you know, hearing the, you know, hearing the, you know, the youth pastor, you know, share his message and all of that. Yeah. And it just challenged me, but I had no support system. I didn't know what it meant to, to be a Christian. I mean, I gave my life to the Lord, but then went three more years down, you know, a hellion path and then finally came to a place of true repentance and really gave myself to the Lord. And so it's amazing to hear how, you know, everybody that has come to know the Lord, how they came and, you know, what that resulted in. It's, it's pretty interesting that you, it was you, you know, by yourself really yeah. realizing that. And so how many years ago was that? Boy, I'm going to date myself, but that was in the early eighties, early eighties, oh, yeah, 83 or so. Yeah. So you've been serving the Lord for a little bit of time and how is, how does that play a role in, in your business? Obviously at Weatherstone yeah. and yeah, I was going to, that was a really good question because it should play a role in, Absolutely. Our, in our business. And, uh, you know, apart from God, I think by our nature, we were selfish, right? I was selfish. I was just worried about me, what I wanted, what my flesh wanted. Yep. And, uh, when we, when we come to the Lord and, and yield our hearts to him fully, yep. that's everything. Amen. You know, and so that's, it's not just uh, going to church on Sunday. It's the choices that I make. Am I actually doing the things that he instructs us in his word? Right. You know, so if we become God centered and it should change our business as yeah. well, it should change your personal, your family yep. life, that you understand what true love is. Right. It's about, it's not about what I'm receiving. It's about what I'm giving. Amen. And, uh, and it's the same in business. We want to be givers. Yeah. And so, uh, we're pretty fortunate. So our, your business should look like that. Yeah, sure. You should really care about your clients. Right. You should want their best. Yep. Uh, you should be just and moral and ethical. Amen. Um, uh, let me tell a quick story about sure. it. Absolutely. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was, uh, 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 last week I was at an event we were sponsoring and it was, um, I, I was teaching a class up in the Port Huron area and we walked out of the class. I think it was a two hour class and the realtor walks up and she hands me a check. She goes, man, I wanted to give you this. And I thanked her and um, went to my truck and I'm like, what's this check for? You know, and I look up in our system, like she doesn't owe us any money. I'm like, what is this? So I call her up. I'm like, now, Peter, what is, what's the check for? She goes, she said, two years ago, one of my clients stiffed you. Wow. And she goes, I felt so bad about that, but I wanted to make it right. And she's not even a believer. Wow. And I said, Peter, that's awesome. And I said, she said, the people had talked about God, but they didn't, they, when they did this, it really bothered me. Wow. And, and I said, you're, you're demonstrating what true faith is because your action should co correspond with what right. you believe. We ended up running into her uh, last week. And my wife, I, I had forgot about the story. My wife says, isn't this Peter who gave you the check? And we ended up having this just great discussion, her and her husband, about faith in God. Yeah. And uh, so, you know. God worked it all together, but that's, that's what it should be. It should, yeah. or, and that stands out just like that stood out to me. I, I told that story to a lot of people saying that realtor has got ethics and integrity. Right. And that's, that made my day. <laughs> and to, and to make it right. And maybe you yeah. don't remember being stiffed or it was just completely written off. And I, I, we wrote it up. I'd forgotten about it. Yeah. It's like, Hey, that's part of business. Yeah. Right? And two years later, that's, uh, yeah. that's so amazing how God does yeah. that too. And just brings that back to the to yeah. the forefront. Um, where, where do you see, w w let's, uh, let's actually back up a little bit. W where do you guys serve? Like what areas do you cover? You know, what areas are you growing into? You know, I, again, there's a lot of real estate agents listening right now. There's homeowners listening and I'd love to, you know, have them uh -huh. learn more about what you guys oh, awesome. do and where you are. Yeah. Our goal is to be the premier inspection company in Southeast Michigan. I love that. And so we're covering 
Wayne, Oakland, Livingston, Lapeer, St. Clair County. I mean, we're out on Harson. Macomb. Yeah, Macomb, yep. obviously. We're out on Harson's Island. We're north of Port Huron. We're in Ann Arbor. You know, we're uh, down at Taylor. So we cover a pretty broad area. That's great. Uh, we've got uh, six inspectors, and we love what we do. And so we're trying to uh, just take – we've got a great foundation. Yeah. We've got a great team. Um, uh, and so – our footprint right now is, I would say it's about a 60 mile radius from Macomb. Yeah. And, 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 and spreading out like, like realtors, we go where we need to go for, yeah. for the, for the work. So pretty much all of Southeast Michigan, pretty much all of Southeast Michigan. I've yeah. been out, we've done inspections at the top of the thumb, top of the thumb. Yeah. <laughs> you can go wherever you, wherever it yeah. needs to be. Exactly. Uh, wh- what's the goal, right? Obviously moving forward. I mean, do you guys want to just focus on Southeast Michigan? Do you want to expand throughout the state? I mean, yeah, ultimately I'd like to expand um, outside of the state, but we want to grow at a, at a level that we can manage and maintain yeah. the excellence and the quality. Yep. And uh, so we've grown to steadily like 20% a year. That's I amazing. Think a good number. That's phenomenal. And, uh, and I'm just really proud of our team. We've got a lot of strong believers. We've implemented kind of going back to what we were just talking about. We've implemented a, a Monday morning prayer meeting I love because that. you know, you can lose your focus right. and, and just in business. When I was a builder, I, you start just all your energy goes into the work. And I think as men, we kind of, yep. we fall that way. Yep. And so it's a good reminder. And I've got, so we, laid out our mission value statement and our culture for the team and they will remind me of that hey what about our you know fam god family and then work you know and so which that. is good we uh but the the prayer meeting what that does for us we say we carve out a half an hour it's voluntary whoever yep. wants to come in and can jump on and zoom and we pray but it helps us to remember that we can work hard god's given us certain gifts but ultimately the things that we have come from our heavenly father absolutely and uh Sometimes we need a reminder of that, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I love that. We do yeah. a, a, a morning real estate prayer call every day at 7.30 a.m. Um, for real estate agents all over the country. Um, I started about a year and a half ago, and now I lead it on Monday, and I've got agents that lead it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And it's just, like you said, it's voluntary, and it's making space for people to yeah. come and to pray and, you know, and, and just really see God move upon, you yeah. know, their prayer requests, which is really amazing. Yeah, a lot of people have needs that, you know, if we're busy about work, they don't talk about them. They're under the surface, and it gives us an opportunity to draw people out yep. to pray for those things. We'll kind of take one person on a team and, and, and pray for them for that week. Yeah. Um, so it's good. It's good stuff. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, guys, for those of you that are listening right now, I mean, you can hear the Weatherstone difference. I mean, it's yeah. pretty phenomenal, everything that you guys do. And the one thing that I loved about what you said was is you don't have to – hire a home inspection company, then find someone to come out and, you know, do the, uh, the septic tank. Cause that's how most of them are. Most home inspection companies, you need to go find an additional company to right. do the, the septic. And I love that you guys do everything. You guys have over a thousand five-star reviews. So you're not just some, uh, you know, willy nilly company. You're not just some company that's just getting started. I mean, you guys have been, you know, in this business over 11,000 inspections. How can, people get a hold of you, you know, real estate agents listening right now, homeowners that maybe want to get a radon test done, sewer inspection, or just that, that checkup. How can people get a hold of you guys? Well, take a look at us. Uh, you can go to our website, weatherstoneinspections.com. Uh, click the button on there. We've got, uh, we're fully staffed. So we've got four beautiful people on staff for yeah. client care. We're going to answer all your questions, talk about what we can do. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, again, check us out online. We've got a thousand five-star reviews and we worked hard to do that. Yeah. Um, and one of the things like you mentioned about the septic inspection, that's, that is one of our differentiators. I love that. Um, my first job in high school was installing septic systems wow. for a good friend of our, the family, you know, so I was in, uh, as a, worked in a, for an excavation company. But, uh, so as the same thing as with home inspections, the well and septics are unregulated. Right. So unless you're doing in, in, in Macomb, Livingston, there's four counties in Michigan that have a point of sale program. That require it. Yeah. That require that. So we're on some of those lists, uh, but our whole team is certified through Michigan state university. So, um, just the same with, with a home ins- or similar to a home inspection, the septic inspection can be anything that the inspector wants it to be. Yeah. And so there's a lot of, you know, uh, someone might come out and turn the water on for an hour yep. and say everything's going down. And that's the home, that's their septic inspection. We're very systematic. We kind of operate on what would be a national standard where we're going to open up the lids. We're going to educate your customer. We're going to do core samples diagonally across the field. We're going to locate all the components. Um, and so that's a big differentiator for that. Yeah. And so we talk about uh, when you call, 
we'll talk about that now. Obviously, the, there's a, a price point on that. Yep. And so we have to convince our clients, hey, it's about value. And we're going to give you the value. We're not going to just do this uh, minimalist inspection. We want to get you all the information you need. We'd hate to have you move in and have your septic system fail a year later. Right. Yeah. And that's a big one. That's not that's not just some cheap replacement. Yeah. So whether you're a buyer and you're looking to buy, like you definitely don't want to pass up on that. Even yeah. if it's not required, still get it done anyway. Mm-hmm. And if you're a current homeowner and, you know, you just want to know what's going on with your septic, definitely reach out to uh, Matt and Weatherstone Home Inspections. Is there anything else that, that you, you know, feel is important based on where we are in today's economy, today's market? You know, what, what should a homeowner be thinking about or, or looking at, you know, moving forward? Well, this idea I mean, that the idea of value is often talked about in the real estate business yep. and in our industry and providing value. And I think that we do that at Weatherstone. Um, so a client should be really looking for a home inspection company that's going to give them that value. You're not buying a washing machine. You know, we've a lot of people will, might lose an inspection for $25. And I say, well, look, look at our credentials. Take, right. take a look at us online. We are going to give you a fantastic inspection start to start to finish our yep. whole staff. And we're going to give you that value. And you really get what you pay for. So it's important to yeah. make sure that, you know, even if you're a little bit more than the guy down the street and that guy, all he's doing is giving you that carbon copy yeah. checklist walking through the house versus yeah. you guys giving a full comprehensive report. To me, this is not something that you want to cut corners on when you're when you're getting a home inspection. Absolutely. And so, guys, definitely Weatherstone Home Inspections is our home inspection company of choice. You definitely want to call Matt and his team. Again, 11,000 plus inspections done, over 1,000 five-star reviews. If you want to uh, reach out to Matt and his team, go to weatherstoneinspections.com or give them a call at 586 651 6556 Give us an opportunity to yeah. earn your trust. We won't let you down. Yeah, guys, give them a call, definitely. Well, Matt, I mean, I, I always say when you get in the flow and the rhythm of having a podcast, you don't even realize how quick it goes, yeah. but this has been great and definitely. Great conversation. I appreciate you having us on. Yeah. It's been awesome. Yeah, so excited that you're here, and Matt and his team are also a sponsor uh, of our show here at uh, the Justin Ford Unleashed podcast, and we got some great things that we're going to be working on in 2023 together. Again, give them a call. Uh, but guys, this episode was brought to you by, again, Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is a team of professionals that believe everyone should be treated as if they live next door. The founders and team members have more than 150 years of combined experience helping clients all over the country choose the best loan program to help you accomplish your goals. Again, Nextdoor Lending is currently licensed in over 21 states and has a team of over 100 loan officers specializing in helping you get the best rate and terms. Whether you're looking to refinance your home or you're looking to purchase your home, give my friends over at Nextdoor Lending a call today at one 888 885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Matt, it's been so great to have you on the show. It's been good to be here. God bless you, my brother. I appreciate God you. God bless you too. Thank you. Guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode here at the Justin Ford Unleashed podcast. Uh, do me a favor. Again, hit the subscribe button. Feel free to share this podcast uh, with a friend or a family member. And uh, feel free to follow me on social media at the official Justin Ford. Again, at the official Justin Ford. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and also here on YouTube. There's two things I want to leave you as we always do here on the show. Number one, it's not how you start. What matters is how you finish. And number two, with God, all things are possible. God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.